Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we are going to examine what happens when a constructor throws an exception. And there's a few different situations that can occur with it. The first situation is just something like this or something like this. And the nice thing to know about constructors that throw exceptions is that if they end up throwing one, the item in here does not get created. So that's an important thing to note is that in case, say, in weapon here, if I just head on in and I go, okay, we're going to do all that. And then down here, I'm just going to go throw one. And I'm just using one once again for an example. Don't actually do that in practice. So if that happens, all of these will end up throwing stuff. But if I end up doing something such as a try catch around these and just go with catch and let's just say catch everything. And we don't really care about whatever it does with it, so we're just happy with that. Well, first off, we're going to have this problem here in that it's not actually initialized for W2 within there. But ignoring the exceptions that we'll get down through here due to the fact that we don't actually have these, the thing that will actually happen, though, is that in this case here, W3 doesn't actually end up with anything here. It'll still be null, effectively. W down here won't have anything. It won't be initialized, which is harder to detect, which is why you have to use exceptions. And that's the important thing to note about is that with a normal constructor such as this one, or in this case you're using the copy constructor, there's no other result other than whatever's in W and W2. So unless we input into every single one of our objects some flag or field that specifies, hey, was there an error during construction, then there's no real way to detect that. So basically, Having exceptions makes it so that we don't have to do all of that extra work of adding in extra fields to all of our classes and then having to check those fields whenever we construct them. We can just do a try-catch to be certain on it. And it still is also useful for things such as on this new weapon here in case for whatever reason we didn't have enough memory to allocate for that weapon. So that happens to all be things worth considering for why you might want to end up doing it for try-catch in there. And the major thing is, is that it is nice that we don't have to then worry about, was this initialized? Do I have to check? Do I then have to delete it later on? Because in case something goes wrong, you don't actually have to do that for that particular case. However, there is actually a bit of another thing that's worth considering. Let's suppose that in weapon, for example, in its constructor, let's just say that for whatever reason, we ended up allocating something. So is it, let's say that rather than damage type being something here, Damage type for now is just going to be some, and we'll just go with a weapon pointer for now. So, or really, actually, let's go with an item pointer so that we can avoid going for an infinite loop. We're going to do this, and then within here, what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, damage type equals new item. And then for whatever reason in here, we then end up throwing an exception. Because of the fact that it will end up deallocating this, but because of the fact we ended up creating new memory on the heap within here before we ended up throwing this exception, what do we then do with that memory? Well, in general, it's up to you to actually deal with the memory that you've allocated on the heap. So what you can actually do is you can surround the majority of this entire thing in here in a try-catch block. So basically what we're just going to do is we're going to tab this guy over here, bring item over to there. So what we do is we do try, and then down here, we do catch. Well, and we can just for now do that with this here. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to basically make certain that all of this ends up being dealt with correctly. So is that we can then down here, say in damage type, go, okay, we need to then delete underscore damage type. And then we'll probably want to rethrow whatever error it is so as that we can end up handling it wherever it ends up calling this, so as it can go, oh, hey, I couldn't allocate that weapon. I need to do something different or unique in order to be able to do that now, or I need to inform the user that we're out of memory and terminate operations, or something else along those lines. So making certain that you do the rethrow here in general makes a lot of sense when you are doing these sort of try-catches here. Occasionally, you might run into a situation where in case you tried like one type in here, and let's say that for whatever reason new item failed, you might do something along the lines of, okay, we do this, so we could even add in something such as, what is it? I believe it's bad alloc, so 
let's try catching an STD bad alloc. So in this case here for it, we probably didn't actually successfully allocate damage type. So instead what we could actually do is we could set damage type is equal to null pointer. And then we actually probably don't need to throw anything because anything that uses it can just check to see whether or not the damage type actually exists and is not null. But we'd have to know more about its general use. And to a certain extent, that could end up coupling us a bit too much to the rest of our system. So it might make more sense to just have this sort of catch here in which it then, or more accurately because of the fact that in case it's a bad alloc, we don't actually want to do anything with damage type since it never actually successfully allocated it here. So trying to delete it then would delete stuff that we don't know where damage type is pointing and we don't have any control over what that memory is. So as a result, deleting it won't make the most sense. So we might in that case then just rethrow here and then it basically says that we couldn't allocate. Granted, that has the problem of that this throw bad alloc would basically give us the same bad allocation error as though weapon itself here couldn't have been allocated. So that's the sort of thing if we'd probably want our own custom exceptions that are derived off of bad alloc. So over in here, in case we had some one that we had created, so we could just go with class and we can call it a damage alloc exception and don't really need anything in it. And this just happens to be what we could then throw to specify that it happens to be different than bad alloc. Or if we wanted to, we could even have this be derived off of STD bad alloc. And that would actually allow us to basically differentiate between the two so that we could actually see whether or not we threw an allocation error when we were trying to allocate weapon or whether we threw one trying to allocate damage type. So that's an important thing to consider with these sort of errors in a constructor is that your constructor itself, in case you're using the new keyword or the like, is going to end up having that possibility of throwing exceptions on its own due to memory usage. It is important to make certain that whatever you get back is actually applicable because you might actually want to still then go, okay, I can still create this weapon. I just can't, for whatever reason, create item within here. So that's really all that we need to know about exceptions within constructors. So let's just undo these changes here to get this back to its original state where it actually was somewhat working. So get rid of all that. There we go there. And weapon quickly just clean up the changes that we had made in there so that it's a bit cleaner. Okay, so now let's move on to destructors. And destructors are very similar to constructors for how their problem is. However, the fact of the matter is, is that in general, you don't want a destructor throwing an error because of the fact that basically I already briefly mentioned stack unwinding, and that's that in case in some function, say down in here, I end up throwing this error, it then is going to go up to here, see in case this happens to have anything else that handles it. If not, it's going to basically take care of cleaning up everything within there, which does mean that in case you did have something such as within here, I had created something other than via auto pointer, I would need to end up deleting it and have a try catch block here and then rethrow it. But in the event that I don't and I just have an auto pointer here, then it's just going to move up to here and hopefully that'll have a try catch block. And if it doesn't, it ends the program. The problem then is that for anything such as auto pointer in here, it's going to call that thing's destructor. So if for whatever reason I ended up being invalid or having been changed, or if I was already deleted and we tried to delete it again, and that then throws an error for us saying, okay, I has been cleared and is pointing to invalid memory now. Then all of a sudden when this destructor gets called, auto pointer tries to delete its pointer to an item in here it's already invalid, ends up throwing an error, and then it's a matter of, okay, well, what do I do? I'm already in a try-catch block. It threw an error here for this one. And in general, that's just going to cause your program to terminate. As a result, whenever we have a chance of having some error in one of our destructors, so for this case here, let's just take a look at linked list because that actually has a legitimate chance of its destructor giving us an error. So if we head over to linked list and its definition, we head into here, you'll note that we end up doing these delete links in here. 
realistically, because there is a chance that one of these links could be wrong, what we would actually want to do is we would want to surround this with a try-catch block in order to protect it. And there is actually even another way of doing this. And it's very similar to how we did it with the constructor and that we can actually do try, surround that, and then do a catch down here. And we just have it catch whatever type of exceptions we want. And as you can see, it doesn't give us any errors here. And similar to the constructor, it basically surrounds the entire thing in a try-catch block for us. So any errors we get will get us down to here. And in this case here, if it ends up messing up, it's a matter of we don't know where in there it messed up. So there's probably going to be memory leaks. But at the same time, we really only have the options of either crashing the program by throwing that error. Or alternatively, we could end up possibly be like, okay, there's a bit of memory lost and it's floating out there. And while it's going to cause some potential problems down the line, we still have a chance of actually continuing to operate correctly. And maybe the user will restart their system before it becomes a problem. And realistically, we're not going to get into that discussion right there as to which is the correct model, because in general, you want to avoid putting yourself in that situation in the first place. So we're just going to leave that alone for now and say that that's really all that we need to know about destructors in the try-catch block, and that the important thing to remember about it is that if you do end up throwing something here, it's going to end up causing your program to crash. In particular, if it happened on stack unwinding, if you do it via delete, there's a chance that it doesn't, or via any other mechanism that would cause a destructor to be called, such as leaving a scope. However, stack unwinding, the problem there is, is that because there are multiple exceptions, the system doesn't know which exception to give priority to, because it basically needs to keep unwinding the stack for both of those exceptions. And it's like, well, I don't know which one to do, so blow up everything, end the program, and leave it alone. So that's really something you want to avoid in destructors, is you do not want throw anything, just because of the chance that they could get caught in that whole stack unwinding process and end up doing it. You don't need to surround your stuff in try-catch blocks, but you do at the same time want to make certain that you do in case you do run into a problem. And in general, what you probably are going to do for something like this, since you don't know how to delete it, is you're going to basically want to output in here some form of log to a log file in order to actually signify that hey, there was an error here, and basically that person can then send their log file in to customer support, and they can pass it on to the developers, and developers can go, oh, hey, there's a problem, obviously, in the destructor for linked list and something else that's going on with linked list, and hopefully the rest of the log file can help them reproduce the bug and figure out what went wrong. So that's, in general, what you're going to do with it, but that's all that we need to cover for today. So thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.